Where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. God has given us unlimited treasures in his word. Every time we open it, we can discover a new treasure or admire an old one. What will we find today? Let's dig in. Here's Carla Early with Treasure Hunt in the Word. It surprises people that my husband and I hardly ever have any arguments, but neither of us enjoy arguing. Most couples, however, tend to have frequent arguments. When I was seven, I had a friend whose parents were getting a divorce. I spent the weekend with her and witnessed a fight between her parents. I knew their divorce made her sad, especially since the argument was about who would get her and her brother. I thought about it, and the next time my parents had one of their heated discussions, I told them that if they decided to get a divorce, I was going to live with Mama. I wasn't going to put up with their fighting over me. Marriage relationships are precious to the Lord because they're supposed to mirror His relationship with His church. Healthy marriages are the building blocks of society. Paul said a married couple should submit to one another. A wife should submit to her husband like the church submits to Christ, and the husband should love his wife as Christ loves the church, to take care of her and protect her. If both the husband and wife would do their part, then a marriage would be peaceful. God also tells us, if possible, as much as depends on you, live peaceably with all men. We can't be responsible for how our partner acts or what he or she says, but we are responsible for what we say and do. Sometimes, no matter what we do, the other person is just having a bad day, and nothing we do will help. Today's But God is toward the end of a passage on marriage and divorce from 1 Corinthians 7, 10-16. It says, Now to the married I command, yet not I but the Lord. A wife is not to depart from her husband. But even if she does depart, let her remain unmarried or be reconciled to her husband. And a husband is not to divorce his wife. But to the rest, I, not the Lord, say, If any brother has a wife who does not believe and she is willing to live with him, let him not divorce her. And a woman who has a husband who does not believe, if he is willing to live with her, let her not divorce him. For the unbelieving husband is sanctified by the wife, and the unbelieving wife is sanctified by the husband. Otherwise, your children would be unclean, but now they're holy. But if the unbeliever departs, let him depart. A brother or a sister is not under bondage in such cases. But God has called us to peace. For how do you know, O wife, whether you will save your husband? Or how do you know, O husband, whether you will save your wife? But God has called us to peace. Whether or not our spouse is a Christian, When we disagree about something, we should be able to say, Because I love you, and I love God, I'm going to submit to you. I don't want to argue. I want to show you love and respect. That would fizzle out almost any argument, don't you think? But like the passage says, sometimes you've got to let people go their way for the sake of peace. That may be a spouse, a friend, a family member, or a church member. God allowed Israel to go their way, and they ended up in captivity in Babylon. Sometimes he lets us go our own way too, but the goal is always for us to realize our sin and return to him. So when we do have to let go of someone for the sake of peace, that doesn't mean we don't need to pray for that person continually and show them love. 1 Peter 4, 8 says, Above all things, have fervent love for one another, for love will cover a multitude of sins. I have a friend right now whose husband has left her. Of course, she's broken hearted, but she told him, anytime you want to come back, I'll be saving a seat beside me every Sunday at church. And she has her friends praying for him too, because she knows that only a change of heart from God will bring him back. But God has called us to peace. Do you have a loved one you've had to release? How are you praying for that person? You can contact us at treasurehuntintheword at gmail.com. We'd love to hear the treasures God has given you through his word. You can listen to other episodes at our website, which you can find in the description below. Thanks for listening. And remember, where your treasure is, there will your heart be also.